Welcome to Jamaica, the land of wood and water, a prime example of tropical beauty and a gem of the Caribbean region. New employment opportunities are emerging which aim to alleviate the growing unemployment rate and elevate Jamaica's economic status. One such opportunity is willing to give Jamaica the chance to enter into a global multi-billion dollar industry which will utilize these creative individuals. Animation is now a global industry well worth over $200 billion. From the early 1900s, animation has been slowly making a stronger foothold in the global society from advertisement to the entertainment industry. Famous animation companies such as Disney and Pixar release animated movies frequently, which use animation in such spectacular ways that they capture the hearts and minds of the audience. I've always had a vivid imagination. I used to watch a lot of animated series and Japanese animated films that helped influence my imagination. I think they are a major part in how my creativity has developed over the years. I believe that if you can get a sh an animated series or show, if you can get the audience to become so invested in the characters and become so engaged in the story, I think it's a magnificent achievement which can only be equaled by the live cinematic features that we know and love today. Animation has been an integral part of my youth. Growing up, I have learned many life lessons and themes from them which resonate in the choices I make today, from standing strong against difficult challenges to never giving up on any of my dreams. All of this couldn't be possible without the local animators who bring these shows to life, from the storyboard and script phase to the big screen and small screens. So basically when you think about it, Jamaica has a great opportunity to engage in this industry and to elevate the Jamaican economy. Chronicles is definitely one of my favorite local Jamaican animated shows. Frankly, it's gained a lot of popularity ever since it first debuted back in 2012, I think. Um, to me, well, I see that this show is the start of an anim animation revolution here in Jamaica where local animators are able to show their talent and skill in the field. And this is a perfect example of that we can do, that we can do storyboarding, script writing, and character design design in our own way. Decades ago, animation was nearly non-existent in Jamaica. Recently, however, new developments have come to light which is helping to get the local animation industry a stronger foothold in Jamaica. Currently, the country seems to be focused on being an outsourcing destination for animation, but there are new movements to not only encourage local animators to create new original content, but to provide new potential animators with an education to tackle the field. I have a burning desire to see how far development of the industry is coming along. Today I will begin my journey to learn about the current state of the local animation industry, any future plans for it, and how far we are going to encourage self-creativity and original content among our local animators. To me, the perfect place to start my journey towards learning more about this industry is with someone who has a similar interest in animation. Animation is now being seen as a way to provide new jobs for animators, graphic designers, web designers, video and film editors, and many others. This realization has helped the University of Technology to introduce their new four-year degree program in animation. It is also here that I met up with one of my lecturers, Miss Tanya Davies, who is an animation enthusiast and supporter. So what about animation makes you so interesting? Um, what I like about animation is the fact that you can literally tell any story and no one will question it. You can go as far as possible. 
and you're not limited by humans or people, so to speak. So with animation, you can make your characters anyway. You can make the story go as far as you want it to. You can create your own universe. You can do it in movies, but it's not as expensive. Um, the cost generally is the same regardless. And so that's what I like about animation. So you can tell any story and no one is going to question its credibility. They'll question if the story made sense, but not the credibility of it. Like if you decide to go to XYZ or whatever planet or so, or you want to create some kind of science to it or whatever it is. The point is just that it's, it has infinite possibilities versus movie making with people. You get limited based on how far a person can go or do something. What are your thoughts on like students uh -huh. who have to who have to do who have to learn and do certain professions okay, so that they don't align with their not aligned with what they want to read? Yeah. Well, I mean, the truth is that's in any any creative field. That's kind of the norm. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the good thing about animation, it's an actual private type of craft. So. I know people who actually work in other areas. There's one person who's like an IT person and he does animation in his spare time. And, he, and the thing is, he's self-taught. So he has been, thank goodness for tutorials and stuff, he's actually been able to go online and teach himself to do this. The people who work full-time other jobs, what they do is they have to carve out a specific amount of time. So that Saturday where you could be doing something else more casual, that's their time to, to sit down and get a few, even three hours or four hours or even a whole day in and call that their work time that they put in. So the benefit of being an animator full-time and being hired is that every single day you can do that. But then you have those who can't and so they have to literally state, okay, well, the Saturday when I could be doing something um, else or having a fun time or going to a party or whatever it is, this is the time I'm going to put towards that. It's the same thing writing. Writing also because, I mean, for me, I like to write. I write stories and screen, screenplays and stuff. But the thing is that you can't do it during your work time. You would generally do it during your off time. So there's nothing really wrong with that. All right, it's just whether you have the discipline to carry it through. It's funny that you talk about uh, the um, like uh, school programs for animation because you think just now has a new animation program. Yeah. yeah. So in your opinion, how do you think? How do you think it will be successful over a period of time? Ah, uh, okay. I actually helped to do the storytelling component, and honestly, if they go according to what they're planning to do, which is to make it a holistic type of animation program. It's not a six month program or one year. It is really a four year program and you're gonna be learning art. So they'll be using the center, generally like the center for the arts for that. So they learn how to draw and be actual artists. And then there's a storytelling part where they can write their own stories. And then they learn the technical side from the actual skit program. Um, and that's why we make them a full animator. So yes, it will work as long as they stick to that, to that plan. plan, it will be fine. It will just need maybe a, a few years to fully develop and see based off of feedback, but it will be, to me, one of the more successful programs where when we get animators, we will get full, well-trained animators. So why is it now that UTech has decided to add an animation program? Is it because they now see that that um, it is that animation will in the future become more beneficial to the economy, or is it that students have have shown a more have asked like for more demand for it? Their multimedia section, the area that they do multimedia, is quite popular, and they have always known that the students have had an interest in animation. So I think it would have been for them. They had they already had plans to do it, you know. Um, they were doing investigations about it from four years or so ago. So they had, a, they even went to Canada to check out the program. So the thing is, they have had it in mind to do it for some time. It's just now that they begin to realize this is the perfect time for it to happen because of just the feedback from on a ground level, the students and people who are interested. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why you could say that. I mean, I'm sure there are other deeper reasons, but the thing is, I know for sure, um, they realize that this is a definite um, good venture for them to go on. The University of the West Indies is a valued educational institution with their own animation program. Originally called the Anime Jamaica program, which was a six-month animation course that was offered by Caramac, it has changed to a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree program in animation. Wanting to know more about this program and what was being taught and offered for the students, I decided to meet up with one of its students, one of my friends, Lani Coleman, who is also a first-year student in the program. Being a first year student in this new animation program, what have you learned in terms of animation development? So we learned the 12 principles of animation, we've done motion studies, 
we did the history of animation, which our teacher went like so far back, <laughs> back to like the chart, chart drawings, and he was going over Victorian era stuff like the Zoetrope. Mm -hmm. Then we went into hand drawn animation. We actually had to make our own light boxes and do frame by frame animation. Define light boxes. Light boxes are like. Well, if for an animation table, there is usually a plane of glass that one mm -hmm. uses with a light underneath it. So you can draw mm -hmm. and then add another piece of paper on top of it. And then you can see the motion that was going on before. Oh, OK. So it's easier to animate when you're doing frame by frame because you can look back and see, oh, I did that for a specific set of drawings. Hi. So what resources and facilities are available to students in the program? So we use the Caramac Annex 2 lab, which is equipped with Macintosh computers. And we used Toon Boom this semester. Mm -hmm. And last semester we were using Flash, but the only reason why we had used Flash was because when we had scanned all our frames for that first big animation project, yeah. um, we had to scan them, put them in Flash to make them move. Some people use Photoshop because it has an animation timeline feature, yeah. but I had used Flash when I was doing it. Okay, I have use Flash too. It's very simplistic and basic though. It's simplistic, but it was at first... Major step. It was just kind of complicated. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> so the BFA in animation program recently replaced the Animate Jamaica program, which was a six-month course. So in your opinion, what are the benefits of a three-year program compared to the six-month one that, that was once Animate Jamaica? Well, six months versus three years. Three years is a longer time to get more knowledge. That's yeah. the first thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, from what I know of the Animate Jamaica program, yeah. it only focused on 2D animation. For this degree program, we're actually going to be doing 3D animation in our third, third year and part of our second year. So we'll be doing principles of 3D animation and another 3D animation course in our final year. What are your opinions um, of the teacher's interaction with the students and how they present the information? Well, usual slides, explanations in class, lecture. Like, well, our course, the classes that we have are done in three hour slots. Oh. So our well, for example, this semester we have drawing for animators, which is Thursday from nine to twelve. Yeah. And that's it's purely life drawing. We have a model that comes in into this room actually, and we have easels and we have stools and we sit, kind of gather around here, and models in the center, and we all just draw for three hours. An animation enthusiast and an animation student. One who's interested in the field and the other who's on its way of learning. Well, how about a person who is a realized animator and well-known professional in the field? One who has dabbled in the field long enough and can give me greater insight into the industry and the future plans for it. Coretta Singer is a self-taught 3D creator and animator. Not only is she a chairperson in the Jamaica Animation Nation Network, but currently she is the president of ASIFA Caribbean. Miss Singer is well known for her animated works, specifically for Kina Sky and Tale of Shadows. She also heavily dabbles in 3D printing and thus creates custom figures such as Thorgi and ones from her own animated works, such as Boris from Tale of Shadows. You, have, you managed to learn 3D animation, 3D creation and animation, animating in general um, back when animation was, was like non-existent to make in terms of learning. What difficulties did you have to go through? Oh god, what difficulties? All the difficulties. Um, I made so many mistakes. I, I mean, things like modeling, um, rigging, just 
rendering, everything was just wrong when I did it the first time. But I mean, I think that was part of the fun, but part of the challenge. It was just like, oh, let me see what this does. And I'm like, well, that was a terrible result. Now, how do I <laughs> fix it? So, you know, that was kind of my my learning process. It was like a lot of trial and error. It was a lot of trial and error. There was no YouTube back then. Back in my day, there was no YouTube. <laughs> so it's not like I could go and check a tutorial and see, all right, how does this work? It's just like pulling sliders and trying to understand what the terminology was and then seeing, all right, well, Okay, so this is what specularity means, so how do I adjust the highlight on the material and all that stuff? So you keep messing with it, eventually you're like, oh, okay, that's what that means. So, when I'm talking about the makeup, we're primarily focusing on outsourcing animation to focus on What are your thoughts on that? There's nothing wrong with outsourcing, but I think that we have so much talent here, we have so much ideas from all of our youths here. I think that as, as much as people want to go into the outsourcing, they should also be thinking about, you know, focusing on IP or local IP because that's where we really are going to have the power and that's where all of our, you know, our strength is going to really come from in the animation, how much stuff do we really own. Because yes, it's nice to say, hey, I worked with, you know, on a, a Disney project or, you know, with Universal Studios or something like that. It sounds great on your portfolio, but how much stuff do we really own? And is that ownership that you going to make you stand up and say, hey, look, you know, look what we're able to produce that the rest of the world wants to see. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with outsourcing, but I think it needs to be kind of balanced out, you know. You know, do the outsourcing, but focus on the stuff that's out here that can be developed and, you know, exported. So it's not just importing, it's exporting as well. You are now the president of a seafood, you know, and I'm sure that must be a very big position for you. It is massive, and we're still trying to work out everything, like what exactly we're going to do and how we're going to pull it off because most of the exec is spread out throughout the islands, which is a little bit diff different from all the other CIFA chapters. They're usually like more geographically close. But like, what I'm trying to figure out is like, um, what what are your plans um, through a CIFA to try and promote original content and creativity and animation? Local I think we want to try and like get people together and showcase work like you know if you have somebody that's a, like an animator and they've created something put it out there show it or show it around if if possible have meetups you know like I said it's a little bit different difficult because we're like geographically separated but we want to try and see if we can get meetups in the different islands and get people to really start talking you know it's just if somebody has an animation I think this is one of the things that it's kind of frustrating for us, especially here in, in Jamaica, is people are doing work but they're afraid to show their work and I don't know why. And even when we just had Kingston um, the other day, one of the things that um, I think it was Mike Buckland from Triggerfish in South Africa, he said, you know, people really need to show their work though. You know, it's not to be afraid. And if, you know, if we're in a position to say encourage people to come out, share their work, and you know get feedback from their peers and talk about their work, talk about whatever issues they might be having. Yeah. You know, it starts that conversation. Somebody might be able to help them, or they might be able to help somebody else. So, you know, any final thoughts or um, advice you would give to any um, potential teachers that you want to try and make it out in the, in the working world? Yes, no matter how good you get. You're always learning. There's always room to learn because I think people feel like you know they get to a point and their friends maybe you're in a small circle and everyone's like yo you that hard you know that tough and everything wicked and it's shut and you think yeah man I reach but really and truly never get too complacent. Always be willing to push yourself and say you know what yeah that's okay but I think I can do better than that. You know always be willing to learn no matter how good you get. Always be open to critique and, and people trying to give you good feedback to help you get better. Always be open to that. This year marks a marvelous event. At the Edmonding College of the Visual and Performing Arts, an event is taking place which brings together local and international animators to showcase their works. Kingston is a two-day animation conference, marketplace, and film festival which aims to continue the efforts of growing the animation industry in Jamaica and getting the attention and collaboration of international clients. 
with this event being a coordinated effort from various institutions and groups such as the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, the World Bank and the Caribbean Development Bank, three core themes are apparent at this conference, learn, earn and display. Through the panels, knowledge and experiences are exchanged between animation professionals to aspiring young animators. So what King Student does is really, it really um, sparks the interest of a lot of aspiring animators out there. A lot of young people came. Over the two days we had about 1,500 persons mm -hmm. coming in. Many of them, you know, curious to what animation is all about. Some of them are animators and they want to see, learn more about, you know, the animation. So what it really does, it really sparks their interest. And out of King Student, I know that many persons you know will want to pursue a career in animation or, or not only animation because you know it, there's a lot of different areas involved you have character design you have illustration animation you have story writing mm -hmm. storytelling so all these areas so Kingston actually um, educates the persons to to the different areas involved and they will want to pursue a career in that and also, Kingston is a great networking opportunity for make per connections. Make connections to yeah. to persons who, who came there. Mm -hmm. They meet international experts. They meet persons from the government, and and they start making those linkages from early that may end up, you know, for, further down in their career, they may end up having having a great job just from linkages at Kingston. The showcasing of animated works, storyboards, and character designs appear at this event, eventually culminating in various competitions such as the Kingston Emerging Animated Content Competition and the Kingston Pitch Competition. Okay, well, the last Kingston was held in 2013, as I said, um, it was more of a local um, conference uh -huh. and competition. Mm -hmm. It was held at the Ignam, the Mona Visitors Lodge at, at Karma. Mm -hmm. So we had over over the two days, about 800 participants, and over the two days, two days we had um, about 200 persons entering the competitions. Mm -hmm. This time, now what we did, we wanted to make Kingston bigger and better than before. So what we did was we, we tried to brand Kingston as a, a regional event and an international film festival. So that's yeah. what we did was open up the competition to the region, uh -huh. and we had an international. Um, festival international competitions as well uh -huh. so it was very successful we actually over we received over 900 submissions from 97 countries in the competitions which was an overwhelming success for us we couldn't believe the amount of submissions we received oddly enough the conference is not barred from showing more unexpected occurrences during the event even ones as surprising as interpretive dancing I think we are presenting League of Maroons, which is a graphic novel app. So it's an app that you download and in it is a series of stories about these four children who actually found out that they are maroon descendants. And with that comes superpowers. We've always been hearing as a Caribbean people that we should tell our own stories, tell our own stories. So I figured two years ago that I would try my hand at it and we built a team. Um, we had a script and idea that really resonated with us and uh, the team basically helped us to um, bring it to life. Um, I'm the producer and co-creator of the project and my business partner 
partner Icon is the co-producer and the sound designer for the project. We had we had many big achievements, but to me one of the biggest achievements was the overwhelming amount of, amount of persons who came there and they were so enthusiastic about learning about animation, you know. Um, so to me that's a very big achievement and it actually it's very inspiring for me to be a part of the planning of Kingston just to see a lot of people that came there and just had an interest to learn about animation and, and pursuing that career. Um, other successes, other 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 um, achievements were the prizes that we got this year. We had prizes from Wacom, which is a leading um, hardware company in animation. We yeah. had prizes from Toon Boom, which is leading in software development, and prizes from TV games as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so we had many sponsors on board this year uh, who sponsored Kingston and it was a huge achievement as well. Representatives of the Caribbean Examinations Council were also present at Kingston where they revealed the new animation and game design syllabus to the CAPE curriculum. CXC is a research-driven trend-setting organization as you recognize by now. And um, as a part of his vision, our past registrar, Dr. Didis Gus Jules, uh, came up with this idea of developing a series of what he called New Generation Cape Syllabuses. Now this came out of market research that was done in 2008 when the council discovered that you had th between 35 and 40 percent unemployment among youths in the Caribbean. This was mainly as a result of um, economies not being able to absorb the number of persons graduating mm -hmm. from traditional programs. Persons who didn't find those traditional programs interesting either yeah. and therefore opted out of school as you know you have troubles. These um, new generation subjects are meant to target out of school population as well as in school population. And so the trend, the, the research would have looked at what's trending. Yeah. And we recognize that animation is an industry mm -hmm. that has very strong economic possibilities. It is quite labor intensive, as you would recognize. Yeah. There are so many possibilities, and therefore we decided to develop a syllabus. But more than that, it came out of the development of digital media, mm -hmm. which is one of the first new generation subjects that was developed here. Um, while that was being developed, the panel recognized that given the nature of animation, given the nature of digital media, mm -hmm. you definitely needed to develop a syllabus yeah. for that. The syllabus also came up when you think of what the Caribbean heads of government decided at their 18th summit that they wanted the ideal Caribbean person to look like. Somebody with creativity, problem solving skills and all of that. Originality. Yeah. <laughs> um, Caribbeanizing our things and moreover, we focus significantly in animation and game design on what we call telling our story. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you recognize, the Kingston Festival has been um, speaking significantly to a number of those Caribbean stories being told. Mm -hmm. Now, we have decided that we want to prepare our youngsters in school to capitalize on this market, this outsourcing that we know is going on, the billions of dollars that this industry can make. What better way to help our youngsters to have fun, but have fun earning, doing, you know, doing the things they like, doing the things that their talents allow them to do. Kingston has come to a close and my journey has reached its end. However, what I've learned has given me new insight on the state of the animation industry in Jamaica and where it is going from here. The local animation industry is growing at a steady pace. New opportunities for potential animators are arising in the form of new animation learning programs and special projects, along with events and conferences that bring together animators from local and overseas to display their work and learn from the professionals of the business. I am especially fortunate to learn that we are encouraging our future animators to create their own original content, thus making way for the possibility that Jamaica will be well known not only for outsourcing animation, but creating our own animated content based on our own creative minds. 
UTEC, UE, and CXC are in full motion in providing those interested in the field with all the resources and education necessary for them to tackle this challenging yet rewarding opportunity. We are beginning to show the world that we intend to be a part of the global animation community, that we are extremely serious about it. With my interest in animation stronger than ever before, I now begin a new journey into utilizing animation for my own benefits and self-teaching for the time being. Will the day come when I can see myself as a full-fledged animator? Well, only time will tell.